Hello everybody on the internet and YouTube and welcome back to my channel for our next video here in our new Sims 2 custom content series. I'm Tea Addict and today we are continuing on from last week's introductory video into the world of the Sims 2 custom content with our next topic. Today's topic is default replacements. So get yourself a nice hot cup of tea. I had one, but I actually finished it already. I'm just holding this mug for comfort. Uh, get yourself a nice hot cuppa and let's dive into the world of Sims 2 default replacements. So what are default replacements in The Sims 2? Well, simply put, a default replacement takes something that is in the game, vanilla, Max's content, and replaces it with something else. Most often something newer, something nicer, something more modern, and something a little bit more up to date. The Sims 2 is a beautiful game, but it was released in 2004, and the elements of the game are very outdated. The game also released with a lot of what we might call whimsy or wackiness, and some of those whimsy and wackiness style objects might not really suit the taste of a modern player in 2023. So if you are someone who is sick of terrain that looks like this, trees that look like this, roads that look like this, sims who look like this, with the eyes, the hair, the eyebrows, the skin, the Maxis faces, then I have good news for you because you can default replace every single thing that I just mentioned and make it disappear from your game forever. So the subject of default replacements is exceedingly broad and to cover all of those categories of default replacements in one single video would probably be about a three or four hour video at a minimum. So today I'm gonna to give you an overview of the types of default replacements you can get and where to get them and then send you on your way to put together some default replacements for your Sims 2 game. So to begin, we are once again gonna be starting in our My Documents folder and talking about folder structure. If you missed my first video, go back and rewatch the section on folder structure because this matters. It is important and keeping your folder structure very clear and organized when it comes to default replacements will really help you out. So in terms of my folder structure that I use, I have a variety of folders that I use for my default replacements, in particular my creator sim defaults, but we could go ahead and create a folder structure which encompasses all the different kinds of default replacements you can get. For example, you could say DFR, which is the naming convention that I use when I'm talking about a default replacement. Technically, I only need DR because it's only two words. One starts with a D, one starts with an R. For some reason, I like having the F in there as well. It doesn't really make sense. I'm aware, but that's okay. So default replacement, DR, whatever you want to do. We could say uh, N hood for neighborhood trees. We could make another folder, which is DR and hood terrain. We could make another folder, which is uh, DR uh, Creek has uh, skins. We could also make a folder that is DR has eyes. It's really up to you how many default replacement folders that you have, but it's really important that it makes sense to you. And I covered this in my last video. So me personally, I have all of my default uh, replacements for my neighborhood in just one mega folder. So um, I just, I would probably just have DFR and hood and all of my neighborhood defaults would go into that one folder. With creator sim, I tend to have things a little bit more split up. So if we take a look at my empty folder structure, I have DFR close for all the different uh, age groups and categories. I then have uh, DFR for hairs, did, then, and then I have DFR other, which is where I stick most of the rest of the default replacements, but I could split that up further and I could have default replacement for skin, default replacement for eyes, default replacement, etc., etc., etc. So before you go ahead and start downloading default replacements, just have a think about what type of folder structure that you want to use in your downloads folder to keep things organized. The next thing that I want to talk to you about now is something called naming conventions. And I've already touched on this a little bit in terms of how my folder structure is organized like my naming convention is for example I'll have uh, build underscore 
category, by underscore category, cas underscore category. That is called a naming convention, which makes sense to me. You also want your naming convention to extend to the files that go within those folders. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at my mega folder of doom and we take a look inside my folder, which is for cas default replacement, close adult female. That's what all of those acronyms stand for. So I have a particular naming convention for the files inside here. So I have AF adult female, and then I have body Adam top jeans underscore corny Reagans. What the heck does this mean? When you're default replacing items in the game, all items in the game have a particular name, right? So for example, in the neighborhood, we have this particular ugly tree, which we might want to default replace. This is called the ginkgo tree. Okay, to go into create a sim and show you the example that we're actually talking about here. To have a look at what things are actually called, you can enable debugging mode in create a sim by pressing shift N and you'll get a pop up that says create a sim is now in debugging mode. Uh, if we go into our clothing category, we have top, bottom and body or outfits. And then all of these have a particular name, which you can kind of see up the top there in the uh, pop-up window. So this one is AF body split dress underscore brown. If we have a look, let's see if I can find the one we were just looking at, which was the Adam top jeans. Aha, uh -huh, I found it. I thought it was this outfit. <laughs> so this is a H&M outfit, this one here, oh, which you can kind of see if I move the camera a bit. Uh, yeah, this is the Adam top jeans outfit. So if I want to default replace this outfit, I name the file what the default is. Now in my mega folder of doom, um, we have uh, underscore Corny Reagans. Corny Reagans is the name of the creator whose default replacement that I am using for this particular object. If we look at the next one, we have AF body assorted dress boots underscore rude hero. So my body assorted dress boots, whatever mesh that is in the game, I have defaulted by rude hero. If we scroll down a bit, you'll see eventually it changes from body to bottom. So now we're talking about the bottoms, so the pants, skirts, shorts, etc., that are in the game. Then we go down a little further, we have top, and then down right at the bottom, I have this random section, which is for my maternity wear. Um, and another section that is for uh, young adults, so rather than adults, sometimes clothes are only enabled for young adults, so I have that mixed in with this folder. I really probably should have that in a separate folder, but I don't. <laughs> but yeah, so this is my naming convention for my default replacements. I will put um, the name of the Maxis object followed by the name of the creator. Why do I do that? Well, default replacements only work when you have one default replacement of a particular item in the game. You cannot have three different default replacements for, for example, the neighborhood lush terrain. You can only have one. You cannot have three different default replacements for this particular hairstyle, which if we take a look, will have a particular name. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, high ponytail, I think. AF hair pony puff is the name of this particular hair. So if I want to default replace this hair, I can only have one default replacement. And the reason that I have my files named so particularly is so it's very, very easy for me to tell if I accidentally put two defaults for the same object in my game at a time. For example, if I were to accidentally download another Adam Top Jeans default replacement, when I rename it to say AF underscore body Adam Top Jeans, say I downloaded by one by Rude Hero, I, it would immediately be sorted alphabetically and I would immediately be able to see that I have two default replacements for the Adam Top Jeans in my folder. I don't want that, I can only have one. So naming conventions matter and it makes it so much easier for you to troubleshoot if you've got a dodgy default replacement or if you wanna change a default replacement for whatever reason, naming conventions will help you. So a good example of a naming convention for, uh, for example, neighborhood trees would be to put, uh, let me get a notepad file open. So we could say uh, Jinko tree, the one we had before, underscore, uh, replaced by, for example, Honeywell, because I know Honeywell has a default replacement for it. We could also say tree underscore Jinko Honeywell. Uh, and then you could also put uh, DFR if you wanted to or default replacement or anything like that. Um, and this will help us keep our downloads very organized, very clean. So if you are gonna go ahead and download de some default replacements, have a think about how you wanna name your files. So editing Beth, I forgot to say, the other massive thing about naming conventions, I can't believe I forgot to mention this, 
Uh, naming conventions also matter because uh, the particular characters and things that are within the file names can speed up or slow down your load times. If your names have anything like special brackets, hyphens, exclamation marks, um, these comma thingies, comma thingies, angled brackets, um, it's going to slow down your, your load times as well as just having like super duper duper long file names will also slow down your load times. So sometimes you'll get like, uh, Michelle is chronic for this actually. God, I love Michelle, but it should be like Michelle, Maxis name, and then uh, color, and then palette, and then uh, recolor, and then O1. And this is just a really, really long file name and this is just too much. You might also find one that has like, you know, the creator name in special brackets. We can simplify all this. We can just go Michelle uh, Maxis name recolor 01. It's a lot simpler. And we're going to talk about this more in our next video. But uh, I just wanted to mention, that's the other thing about naming conventions. No special characters, short file names equals happy game. So how do you get started with actually finding default replacements for the game? Well, if there's something in the game that you don't like the look of, have a look and see if there's a default replacement for it. I will give you a disclaimer to say that in general, default replacements for in-game objects in buy mode or build mode is only just starting to be done within the, the modding community. You can check out Lord Crumps on Tumblr and Mod The Sims for an example of this up and coming world of custom content where he has actually started to default replace objects in the vanilla game with objects from The Sims 4 instead. But so for example, a default replacement for this chair is something that Lord Crumps has done, uh, but for this couch he has not yet done and you would be hard pressed to find a default replacement for Maxis buy mode objects. There's really not that many out there. Basically everything else in the game can be default replaced up to and including also the UI, which I forgot to mention too. And if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, you might see people with a clean white UI. Uh, my usual videos have a clean black UI because I find the white one a little too bright. Uh, there's also green, pink and blue and a different blue, I think possibly. Uh, so that is something else you can default replace as well. But if you want to get started with default replacements, I recommend just having a think about what bugs you the most and start by default replacing that. Say for example that you decide the trees bug you the most. Well the first thing you would want to do is head to Google because remember from my last video Google is your best friend and you can search Sims 2 neighborhood uh, tree default replacement and start taking a look through the images to find some default replacements for the trees in the neighborhood. Uh, some very popular ones that come to mind off the top of my head are the Linden tree set, which you can download from Croquette's Tumblr, which I actually have open here as a highlight uh, for a very good download. Croquette also ha does the Rural Charm default replacements, which includes roads and terrain. So Croquette is someone who you do want to check out if you are getting started with default replacing things. If you want to get started by replacing creator sim content, so hairs, clothes, skin, eyes, eyebrows, makeup, or everything in creator sim can be default replaced. You have to be aware of this website right here. This is the Sims 2 default database on Dreamwidth. And this thing is so, so helpful. <laughs> so we have, first of all, uh, babies and toddlers unisex. So this is clothing. This, uh, this top section is for clothing. So uh, babies and toddlers, children, teenagers, young adults, adults, elders. This is all clothing. And it's uh, mostly divided into male and female. But you can see here there is also just one topic for babies and toddlers. Uh, the next section we have is hair default replacements, male and female. Then we have face templates. So if you do not want to see this face on your Sims anymore, you can go ahead and download some default replacement face templates so that when the game randomly generates Sims for your neighborhood, for example, townies or NPCs, those townies get a cute face rather than that one. Skin tones, we have a couple of different sections here. We have Maxis Match Human, Maxis Match Supernatural. So you can create, you can default replace the four main skin tones and also the alien skin tone, the vampire skin tone, the zombie skin tone, witches and wizards, uh, and I think that's most of them plant sims as well and yeah so you can get those from here then we also have semi and realistic human and semi and realistic supernatural then we have eyes makeup all things servos things for plant sims things for aliens things for npcs we also have pet default replacements for eyes and fur and 
as I said, this is an amazing database. You'll also notice that if we go into the adult female clothing section, everything is organized by those names that we looked at before when we looked at the creator sim debugging name and my personal naming convention. So if we were looking for an example for a replacement for the Adam top jeans, here it is labeled Adam top jeans. So you can click on this picture. Uh, it'll load up another page where it shows all of the default replacements that have been made for this particular outfit. Default replacements for clothes can vary from just replacing the textures to completely replacing the meshes and the overall look and feel. You will also notice that this post here is a very different style because this is medieval. So the default database also includes default replacements if you want to put together a medieval downloads folder, which is a very helpful tip to know. Uh, I think the one that I have downloaded uh, was the one by Corny Reagan. Uh, if I remember correctly. Yep. So I think that is this one right here. Uh, yep. So this is Corner Reagan's Tumblr. This is the outfit that I have in my game instead of the Adam Top jeans. So that is how you can get started with downloading default replacements for your clothing. Uh, if we go into the hair section, everything is sorted out very similar. Again, you can go ahead and click on the pictures of any hairs that you don't like and see if you can find a default replacement for that particular hair. One note with hair default replacements is that more and more often creators are uploading complete default replacement sets. Um, so for example, if we take a look at this rockabilly hair, you might find a link that goes somewhere that will, here we go, almost all hairs replaced, Remy V2 textures, hiders for extra colors, texture replacements, sometimes mesh replacements, etc. Um, so this is a default replacement set that will replace almost all of the hairs in the game. So if you want to, you can just download a mega set of default replacements and do it all that way. As I mentioned in my last video, more and more often things are being default replaced by things from The Sims 4. And 4 to 2 hair has a particular name, which is clay hair. So if you are wanting to find some good defaults for your hair and you want to go Sims 4 style, I highly recommend coming over to Tumblr and typing in 4 to 2 clay uh, hair. Here we go, 4 to 2 clay hair. And this is like a whole blog all about Sims 4 to 2 conversions. Continuing our little deep dive into hair default replacements as well, it's worth noting that different creators will use different color swatches for their hair defaults and it's always worth uh, potentially trying to keep your color swatch in mind. If you want to have everything look very unified, you might want to choose a particular color swatch and particular uh, textures that you download. For example, there is this guy, this person's uh, hair system. There's also the hair system by Mike XX. There's Pooklet colors. There's uh, a variety of different, uh, yeah, variety of different colors that you can use. Uh, this default hair project was using some of Pooklet's colors and textures, but there are a variety of different ones that you can look into. Uh, Peppermint and Ginger is another one who has their sort of own color swatch that they use. So if you download one default from Peppermint and Ginger and one from the other mega set, the colors may not particularly match. So you can always look into what different color, uh, yeah, color swatches there are from different people. Okay, sorry, we now have a special guest joining us who just woke up from his nap while I finished recording this video. <laughs> but yeah, so the default database is your go-to for any and all creator sim default replacements. If you're looking for other types of default replacements, as always, start with a Google search. But I wanna highlight some of my favorite default replacement uh, resources where you can find some really great stuff. Hi. So as I already kind of mentioned that Croquettes Tumblr is a great place to get some really nice tree default replacements for your neighborhood, as well as the Rural Charm default replacement. And this is a Tumblr. So we remember from our first uh, video that Tumblr works by tags. So if you have a look at what uh, Croquette has tagged this with, uh, you can see here we've got hashtag default replacement. So if you click on this, you'll find everything that uh, they have tagged as default replacements. So just by looking at this tag, I can find default replacements for birch trees. And I love these defaults, by the way, they are so pretty. <laughs> default replacements for pine trees, uh, default replacements for the linden trees, as I mentioned. Uh, animated traffic default replacement, so you can literally replace these little cars that drive around your neighborhood if you want to, which is uh, kind of fun and crazy. 
Uh, there's also, let me see. Oh my gosh. Uh, so we have some road defaults right here. Uh, Cricket, as I said, did the rural rural charm defaults, which are really nice. Um, as I said, so many different options for default replacements exist out there. And what I recommend doing is when you are trying to decide on a default replacement for your game, make a make a test neighborhood. OK, back up your regular neighborhoods. Do not test out default replacements in your main neighborhood. Make a test folder so that your game will load up and close down really, really quickly. Put in some defaults. See if you like them. If you don't take them out, pick and choose. See which ones suit you the best. What suits your aesthetic? What suits your style? Another amazing creator when looking for default replacements who I absolutely love is T Vicky Sims. So this is T Vicky Sims as Tumblr. And once again, we can go ahead, take a look at her tag over here. She has for default replacements. T Vicky Sims is going through and also default replacing a lot of the Maxis objects. As I said, this is not an area of The Sims 2 that has been regularly default replaced in the past, but it is being so now. So she has default replaced some of the rugs and added some extra recolors to them. Uh, the welcome mat you can see here, she's default replaced, added extra sizes and recolors. And my favorite default replacements by T Vicky Sims are her plant and trees mm. default replacements. Here you can see she's done bookcase, the books that are in the bookcases, she's default replaced. Um, hedge default replacements and yeah so her plant defaults are my absolute favorite I downloaded these and I cannot play without them now so we've got here's a default replacement for some of the stairs in the game desert plants here we go now we get into the good stuff so the desert plants that exist in the build mode catalog she's default replaced with nicer updated did you just vomit all over me you did just vomit all over me. <laughs> nice that updated uh, Maxis match textures and uh, meshes and they look really, really nice. So I highly recommend checking out everything that T Vicky Sims has released. I can't believe you just puked all over me right on live on camera. I wonder if the camera actually caught, like got that. We'll find out, I guess. <laughs> um, another one to check out is Lord Crumps. I did mention him before uh, in that he has literally just uploaded this big default replacement set for dining room chairs and tables. I actually assisted a little bit on this one. I helped I help Alex to decide which objects to use, basically. I'm not very good at... I don't have a lot of time, so I'm not very good at actually doing the, the work of the default replacing. But um, yeah, I've helped him pick out some of the default replacements that he's done. So he is on Tumblr as well as on Mod The Sims. On Tumblr, he's got uh, hair defaults. He's got, uh, he's also default replaced all of the the walls, all of the wallpapers in, in build mode with wallpapers from The Sims 4. Here's a default replacement for new moon, new stars, new black sky defaults that he did. Yeah, here we go. So 4 to 2 defaulted walls, Sims 2. So all of the walls, in The Sims 2, you can just, in one download, replace them with walls from The Sims 4, if that's your thing. <laughs> he has also done some really, really nice road and terrain defaults, which you can see here. And this is a really fun download because this one you can mix and match which roads you have on which different terrains. So if you didn't know, in The Sims 2, there's four different uh, terrain types that you can choose from when you're creating a new neighborhood. So we could have this driftwood terrain and we can choose these terrain types. So lush dirt, desert or concrete. That's my hair buddy. <laughs> and so Lord Crumps has done default replacements for all of those different terrains as well as some roads to go with them. So that's another really cool one. Other fun random default replacements that you can get which I enjoy are things like <coughs> default replacing the uh, names, the random names that the game assigns to townies. Fancy Tom Yoy and all those weird Maxis names that they included with the game. So you can go ahead and actually do a Google search for Sims 2 default name replacement. So gigantic towny replacement mod, nice. Uh, so we can have a look here. And uh, they have basically gone through and added a bunch of new names that the game will randomly assign to the Sims rather than the ones what are you looking at that the game would otherwise use a uh, quick little caveat though on these name default replacement files when you download this it's going to be titled live or live so if we take a look in this download yes this package file is called live.package this one 
so far is the only file that I have come across which you cannot rename. If you rename this file, it will stop working. So if you get a default replacement for names, don't rename that file. It has to be called live or it won't work. But yeah, other fun random defaults you can get are things like for the sun, the moon, the stars. You can also get default replacements for like the snow textures. That is my brief introduction into the world of default replacements and I highly recommend this as a really great place to start when you're building your downloads folder because after you've default replaced everything, for example in Creator Sim, uh, then you'll be able to see what gaps you have and what holes that you feel like you need to fill within those uh, Creator Sim categories. For example, if after you default replace all of the formal wear, you still feel like you don't have enough nice suits for your adult male men, then you can go ahead and, and start looking for extra custom content to then add to your game. But default replacing to start with is a great way of keeping your downloads folder smaller because then you know, an object that you wouldn't otherwise use because it's ugly and you would never put that on one of your sims as an outfit, you may now actually be interested in using because you've default replaced it with something a lot nicer. Now, as always, a great place to come if you're just getting started with a journey of default replacing is PleasantSims.com. Uh, she has a great master post on default replacements, the types you can get, why, how they work, where to find them, how to install them, how to organize them, all that kind of thing, how to remove them. And something on this master post, which I do recommend using, and I have used it before many times, is uh, her default clothing and hair spreadsheets that she's got uploaded for us to use. So there's alternate Google Sheets links, which I'll open so you guys can see. But basically, uh, Pleasant Sims has taken the time, Cindy, what a legend, has taken the time to write down the names, um, all, those, all those debugging creator sim tooltip names, for all of the clothing and outfits for adults, elders, children, teens, male and female, and uh, the same for hair. So this is really helpful for uh, keeping track of what you have default replaced and what you haven't if you're just getting started with default replacing things because there is a lot to default replace. Um, otherwise, if you want to, you can always just come into the default database and start clicking on anything that jumps out at you that you would like to default replace and just keep your naming convention organized and then uh, it should be really easy to continue to fill in those default replacement gaps as you go. One word of caution that I will say with downloading default replacements is if you already have a little bit of a downloads folder on the go, say you've, you've got a couple of recolors, you might have a couple of extra meshes, you might have a couple of extra hairs, extra clothes, extra objects in the game, and then you go ahead and download a default replacement for something, that can break some of that downloaded content. For example, if you, have recolors of a chair and then you download one of Lord Cramps's new default replacements for that chair, um, those recolors won't work properly anymore because they are trying to recolor the old mesh rather than the new mesh. With creator sim content, what can happen is that sometimes a creator will use a Maxis mesh, a Maxis object, as a base for the piece of custom content that they create. So then if you default replace the base mesh, whatever piece of custom content they made that used that mesh no longer works because that mesh no longer exists. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> uh, it can happen with hair as well, with clothing, with objects. So do just keep that in mind. If you already do have a downloads folder and you start putting in default replacements, occasionally, not very often, but occasionally, uh, putting in default replacements can break some other custom content. Okay, now who is ready for advanced lesson number one? <laughs> I wanted to end the video here, but then I realized that if you're going to start downloading things, I should probably show you how to read download pages, right? That's probably an important thing. If you've never downloaded much custom content before, occasionally reading through download pages can be a little bit confusing because sometimes downloads are complicated and difficult to understand exactly what you're looking at. So there are a couple of things that I'm going to highlight as important to take note of, okay? So I'm going to use for this example Lord Crump's uh, hood and road default replacements, which I have shown you before. So we can download replacements for lush, dirt, concrete and desert. Um, if I don't like any of these defaults, these are, here's the before and afters, um, I can not use them. Um, so for example, he's actually default replaced dirt with 
grass and concrete with grass, I might want to keep the concrete. I don't mind the concrete, maybe. But um, the roads, I mentioned, you can sort of mix and match which ones you want. So, so if we actually take a look at this download, there are four different files to download. So why are there four? First of all, we have the road defaults file. Then we have the road overlays file. So when downloading road default replacements, there's two elements to it. There's the neighborhood view roads, and then there's the lot view roads. And those are actually two different sort of things that need to be overridden. So the road defaults will override the neighborhood roads. And then the road overlays are what we use on the lot view to make that road look like the rest of the neighborhood. Then he's also put in for us matching floor tiles, which is really nice. So if we want to match the sidewalk on his uh, his nice roads to uh, some extra sidewalk for our community lots, as an example, we can download his matching floor tiles. And then the last file here is the terrain defaults. So if we take a look inside all of these zip files, and I've already gone ahead and downloaded them for us, say I'm going to put these in my neighborhood terrain folder. Uh, so road defaults, this is important. Choose one file. If you're downloading default replacements for something and it tells you to only choose one file, you need to only choose one file, okay? Uh, his floor tiles, this is very basic. I would actually probably put these, I could put them in this folder, but I might put, actually put them in my, um, my flooring folder, but I'll put them in here for now. And then, sorry, we've got road overlays. Um, so here are the road overlays for all the different types of roads. So if I had chosen to default replace every single neighborhood with the grungy road, uh, I would only need the grungy road overlays, but I've put all four of them in. So I'm going to grab all four of those. And then uh, last but not least, we have his terrain defaults. So I can pick and choose which ones of his terrain defaults I want to use. And if I don't like one of them, like I don't want his concrete one, I don't put it in. One of the most complicated downloads I've ever come across is actually the Rural Charm uh, Terrain and Road Default Replacement Set. This is a modular default replacement set. So there are different modules to this. There's some defaults and then there's some extras. So if we take a look at this download, this is one of the most complicated ones I've ever seen. It's got its own special page on Tumblr. So it says it has a disclaimer here that it says it is quite complex, requires some knowledge and experience in neighborhood decoration, custom neighborhood camera use and other advanced playing techniques. So if we scroll down, we've got some compatibility, some requirements, known issues, um, installation, like how to use it. But so if we go down to here, we've got the main package in this is the actual lush terrain default replacement. So if I wanted to download this one, I could use Lord Crump's um, desert terrain default replacement, but I could use this one as the lush terrain default replacement. How would I do that? Well, I would go through it and I would update my naming convention, which I haven't done. Uh, and I would put this one in. So what I would do is I would say uh, terrain lush, uh, rural charm, or I would probably put in here croquette rural charm and get rid of the rest. And then the one by Lord Crumps here, no, that's a road default, hood, uh, lush terrain default, I would delete. Uh, and then I would probably rename this one. So say I wanted to keep his dirt terrain default. So I would rename this one terrain dirt Lord Crump's default uh, and save that. So now you can see it's starting to get organized alphabetically, which is going to make things easier if I do want to continue to chop and change and pick and choose. And so then if I decide I actually don't want to use, for example, Lord Crump's desert terrain for whatever reason, I could go online, I could search for a different ter desert terrain download and I could put that one in instead. Anyway, back to this. So First of all, we downloaded the Rush, Lush Terrain Default Replacement. Uh, then we have the Lush Temperate Road Default Replacement. So I could put Cricket's Rural Charm Road in for the Lush Terrains. I could keep Lord Crump's Road for the rest of them, as long as I don't have two for the same thing, which I control through my naming convention. Um, then we've got a transparency fix. So this is a mod uh, to fix an issue with the roads, apparently. Then we've got lot mode road overlays. So this is the same as what was included in the Lord Crump's download for the road overlays that we need for the lot view. 
Um, and then if we keep reading, we come down here to Unified Bridges set. So this is extra custom content. This is not a default replacement. This is extra because the bridges are just extras and you can see what's included if we choose to download that. Decorative road pieces, again, extra custom content, not default replacements. We could download these if we want to. So just the biggest thing I guess to note with downloading stuff is to read read the fine print. And I actually struggle with that because I don't, I'm not great at reading things on the internet. I'm, I struggle to actually take in information when there's a lot of text on a web page. I'm much more picture based. And I think I talked about that in my last, um, <laughs> yeah, my last video. So read the fine print, do pay attention to what you're downloading. Look out when something says to only choose one because a creator might include different versions of the same thing. Uh, T Vicky Sims, for example, so she, this is her Tropical Trees default replacement. She's got a V1 and a V2. So you don't want to have both V1 and V2 in there at the same time because they will cancel each other out. They won't work. So you've got to be careful to actually uh, choose the ones that you want. And she's got the two pictures here so you can choose. So that's a little tutorial on how to actually read uh, download pages. If you have any more questions about that, please do let me know. Um, I guess another thing that I will say is uh, a lot of the time, and I kind of covered this in my last video, but sometimes sets get updated. So a set will be released and then the creator will be like, oh, I'm going to actually update this and release you know, an update and then I'll release another update and then I'll release another mm -hmm. update. So if you come across a web page like that, try to make sure you scroll down to the bottom, <laughs> read carefully. If there's a download that's like the latest and it's got everything included, go for that one. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of that. Okay, so here's a good example. So this is uh, default replacements for the pine trees. So we've got the first part uh, talks about three of the base game pine trees, which we can download here. Then it starts talking about something else, which is uh, the same seasonal pines as base game lot pines imposter default replacement. So this is going to change uh, what they look like on a lot. So we can download that one separately. Then there's a fix here for the Christmas tree pine, which we can download separately. Or right down the bottom, it's the full pack of the seasonal pine trees. So yeah, just keep reading all the way to the bottom. Take note of things and just uh, yeah, be sensible about what you're downloading. Right, so what I'm going to do to finish off this video is insert a little time lapse here of me finding default replacements for all of these uh, sections. So I've got uh, creator sim eyes, face templates, hairstyles. Um, I'll probably just try downloading a mega post for hairstyles and skins. I'm going to get neighborhood terrains, which I've already got. I just did that. Um, and also neighborhood trees. And then I will show you what the game looks like with some default replacements.
uh, full disclosure, it's a couple of days later. Uh, putting together this mini default replacements folder took a lot longer than I anticipated because for some reason I decided that I would go through and handpick an entire folder of hair defaults, which I did not have to do for the scope of this video, but I've been meaning to redo my hair defaults, so I kind of just went ahead and did it anyway, but that's okay. So let me show you some side-by-sides of no defaults compared to defaults. And I do think it looks a lot nicer um, for me. This is really nice. So this is with Cricket's Rural Charm terrain uh, for the lush terrain, but Lord Crump's Suburban Road defaults. Uh, I've used Honeywell's Birch Trees. I've got the Linden Trees. And I think I also used someone else's default replacements for the Red Bun and the Jinko Tree. And uh, yeah, the CS Pine default replacement. Unfortunately, it did only default replace these three pine trees rather than these larger ones. And I've spoken to a friend of mine about the possibility of default replacing these larger pine trees too but they're not seasonal so it's going to be like a whole job and uh, my friend doesn't have time to do it right now so uh we'll work on that in a future update but yeah so here's the neighborhood thinking it looks a lot nicer i will also show you the terrain from the lot view so yeah this is now how the game looks from the lot view i really do love the difference in the grass texture in particular when you you're here on a lot um i really don't love the vanilla Max's grass texture from Lot View in particular, so thinking that looks a lot better. Okay, and here we are in Creator Sim. So this is my lovely lady default. Uh, it, I've just used this face here from the sim bin and put some new hair on her. So let me show you guys the difference that default skin, eyes, eyebrows, and hair can make to the look of your sims. Uh, I think that the sims just look so much better. I could also grab default replacements for the makeup. That's another really nice default replacement you can get, uh, which is available on the default database. I did not go ahead and do it this time. But yeah, I think uh, I think the Sims just look a lot better, in my humble opinion. For my hair defaults, I decided to go for uh, Sims 4 to 2 conversions rather than my usual uh, more Maxis match style. And uh, I enjoyed putting together the 4 to 2 hair conversions folder. Um, it was a lot of fun. I wanted to be wanting to try out a 4 to 2 conversions folder for a little while, so that was really good. Um, I got most of the hairs defaulted, and um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't mind playing with that. And then for the face defaults, uh, you can see here if I go ahead and uh, control click on all of these icons, the face default templates are going to update and you'll be able to see the difference in the face defaults as I click through them. And uh, yeah, as I said, for me, face default replacements are particularly important, especially when it comes to men. So if we change this guy over to a male sim, um, nice hair dude. And yeah, just start clicking through these old face default templates um, and comparing them with the new ones that I got. I do think these are just much, much nicer. A lot of these faces, I just really never want to see again in my game. So face default replacements, very, very, very nice. And if you guys are interested in any of the things that I'm showing off in this video, uh, leave me a comment and I can send you a link for the exact ones that I downloaded. Uh, Cause yeah. These, these face templates need a lot of help. <laughs> But alright guys, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope that you've enjoyed this introduction into default replacing things in The Sims 2. If you have any questions or anything you'd like further information on, go ahead, leave me a comment. I am uh, always happy to answer questions. You can also jump into my Discord if you'd like to join our community. And there's a lot of people there who can help you with any uh, questions or download links or anything like that. Um, so there's a link for that in my video description if you'd like to do that. But in the meantime, guys, please go ahead, leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it and if you'd like to see more in the sims 2 custom content series go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell next time we're going to be diving into the world of sims 2 recolors that is in my opinion the next step after doing default replacements uh for uh building up your downloads folder. So that will be the topic of next week's video. Hopefully I won't spend days and days and days and days filming it like I did this week's video and it'll be out a little bit sooner than this one. But yeah, everybody take care, have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.